It is November 11th, 2020, and that means it has been one full day since Apple's event regarding their announcement with the whole Apple transition from Intel over to Apple Silicon Max, and it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. I made that clear in yesterday's video. But now that the dust has settled, the excitement has settled, some real concerns are coming up, and that's what today's video is all about. Hello guys, how are you today? My name is David Franco, and I just realized this green flow thing. You know what? This is a great opportunity to talk about screen flow this is not sponsored and or affiliated in any way screen flow is incredible like if you're looking for a great way to record uh, screen captures on your mac check out screen flow i have yet to find anything that comes even close so yeah let me let me close it i swear i'm not being paid to say that i wish i was screen flow reach out to me i love you guys i've been using your products for years anyway today's video is all about apple silicon and some realizations that have uh, just popped up in the last 24 hours. Okay, so listen, I love Apple. This isn't meant to be dissing Apple or dissing the Mac. Apple has quite literally changed my life. They've gotten me into content creation. iMovie eventually upgrading to Final Cut Express. Remember that? Years ago. And then eventually Final Cut Pro 10. I love Apple. That's no secret. I mean, come on. I got Apple stuff behind me. I was wearing an Apple shirt yesterday. But... I'm no fanboy, you know? I'm not afraid to call them out when I have some concerns. So that's exactly what today's video is all about. So yes, with that said, let's talk about those concerns. And I'm very curious as to what you guys have to say. So comment below and please keep it civil. There's no need to get nasty. I, I just say that because there's, there's something about like tech videos and especially gaming videos where people just get like really, really nasty. Let's just have a good debate. Let's have a good debate. This isn't some Mac versus PC thing. This is a huge transition Apple's doing and honestly it's going to change the Mac forever. I, I know I know that's kind of like marketing terms from Apple, but it really is going to change the Mac forever. Hopefully for the better and not for the worse. So let's jump into it, finally. Alright, so first of all, my biggest concern is Apple seems to be simplifying, which is usually a good thing, but in terms of simplifying, they're kind of dumbing down the checkout process when you buy a Mac. Okay, for example, let's click on Mac. Let's go to the brand new MacBook Air, which I'm actually intrigued by. Like I actually might be buying myself a MacBook Air early next year. And I, I, I say that because I'm not typically a MacBook Air fan because I love my MacBook Pro. I need a little more power than your typical user. But looking at the specs, like there's not a huge difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. So let's explore this. Click on that buy button, all right? And we are going to see what we have here. Okay, so right away, we see that Apple shows with the MacBook Air, you get the M1 chip with eight core CPU, seven core GPU, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, and that's for 999. Now going to the other MacBook Air, you get pretty much the same chip, but with an eight core GPU and double the SSD storage. <sighs> and only eight gigs of memory. I mean, this this is this is understandable on this model because it's an entry level model, so you can expect, you know, everything. But this, in my opinion, should have at least 16 gigabytes of memory and more on that in a bit. But anyway, I mean, th this, this is it, guys. This is it. There is no mention of a clock speed. Now, obviously, Apple knows how fast their chips are, but we as the consumer, we don't know. Like, there's no clear difference between both of these M1 chips except for this extra core GPU. So you got to ask yourself, is that really worth the extra $249? I don't know. I don't know. So let's go over to the uh, MacBook Pro, okay? MacBook Pro 13 inch, because they obviously have not upgraded the 16 inch model. So let's click on that buy button. Same exact deal. Look at this. M1 chip, eight core CPU, eight core GPU, 256 gigs of storage. The other model, eight core CPU, eight core GPU, double the storage, still only eight gigs of memory. Why Apple? Why? 
So let's open this in its own window, okay? Let's put this one on the left because we're gonna make this, whoops, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, sorry. User error, I admit it, user error. All right, so the MacBook Pro is gonna be on the right. Let's go back to the MacBook Air on the left. Click that buy button once again. Okay, look at this side by side. Eight core, eight core, eight core, eight core. And that's for the CPU. GPU, seven core, eight core, eight core, eight core. Eight gigabytes of memory, eight gigabytes of memory, eight gigabytes of memory, eight gigabytes of memory. <laughs> 256 storage, 512 storage. You know what? That's, that's not that bad. 256 storage, 512 storage. In my opinion, the MacBook Pro should start at 512 storage and the more expensive model should be one terabyte storage. But I'm gonna say it again, you don't see a clear difference between these two models except for a little bit of storage and there's no clock speed. Like the, the geek, the nerd inside of me wants to see the clock speed. But then it got me thinking, is Apple going to simplify the Mac checkout process as if it's an iPhone? So with that said, let's go to the iPhone. Let's go to the iPhone 12 Pro. Let's click on shop, which is interesting because it doesn't say buy. I guess because there's more variations with the carriers and all that stuff. Okay, so iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12 Pro Max. The only clear difference is the display size. You can choose your colors, blah, 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 your carrier, and of course your storage. But do you see any mention whatsoever of clock speed? No, because honestly, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. iOS is developed specifically to run on the iPhone. That's why the iPhone runs so well. That's why arguably the iPhone performs better than most new Android phones. That's a fact, and that's not me dissing Android. I, li I, li I like Android. I'm looking around, my, my Pixel 5 is sitting in the kitchen. But that's just my point. Like, It's literally apples to apples here. And I think Apple is going the iPhone approach with their Macs and saying, look, we don't need to show clock speeds because honestly, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. This is an Apple OS on an Apple device with an Apple chip. Like it's completely controlled by Apple, which arguably is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. But I would like a little more transparency Again, for the geek or nerd inside of me, inside of you, don't you want to know exactly what you're getting in terms of clock speed? So, I don't know, I mean, we're, 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 we're still so early in this transition, so maybe this is the new norm, maybe this is the new standard, because I'll say it again, the whole clock speed thing doesn't really matter on the iPhone, so maybe it doesn't matter on the MacBook, or even the Mac Mini. So let's go over to the Mac Mini, Way over here, little guy, you know, click on buy. And let's see what we have here. Doesn't that look familiar? <laughs> it's exactly the same chip. Eight core CPU, eight core GPU, eight core CPU, eight core GPU. Same storage on each side. Now, obviously a notebook is quite different from a desktop because you're gonna be using them for different reasons. But yeah, I mean, my point still stands. These are exactly the same configurations or at least very, very close. Like there's no true difference because we can't see the clock speed. I cannot say that enough. But of course, if you scroll down to the Intel i5 Mac mini, which they still sell, check it out. Three gigahertz, six core, eighth gen core i5, which honestly isn't that great. You're just, you're just better off buying the Apple M1, but look, the checkout process fully lets you configure even up to 64 gigs of memory. Why you can't do that with the new M1 Max? I don't know. I doubt it's a technical limitation. I've never seen such a limitation on memory in 2020 on a modern computer. I mean, guys, look at this. We can still go up to two terabytes of storage, so why can't we get 32 gigs of memory? Maybe it's different. Maybe maybe RAM is gonna be controlled differently because this is an SOC system on a chip, right? Is that what it stands for, SOC? System on a chip, yeah. So this is a more unified experience. So perhaps much like clock speeds, 
RAM usage isn't as relevant as it is on Intel Macs. So, I don't know. Again, this might be the new norm. You're going to hear me say it a lot. This might be the new standard Apple is going with. So, yeah, I mean, I'll just remain optimistic. I mean, guys, we can't forget when everyone was worried when Apple rolled out the App Store. They said, and this doesn't go for everyone, but myself included in the, um, you know, the positive circle, if you will, I was saying, no, 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 there's no way Apple is going to limit you to only installing apps in the App Store. There's no way. There's no way. And thankfully, I was right. But we had a bunch of people saying that Apple is not going to allow apps outside of the App Store to be installed on the Mac. And thankfully, they were wrong, and I was right in the positive circle. Okay, so I get it. I'm rambling. I'm rambling. There's a lot to say about this topic, but hear me out. There has to be a reason why Apple is limiting us to 16 gigs of memory for now. There has to be a reason. So I'm just going to say this. Remain positive. Remain optimistic. And honestly, if it's that big of a deal, then don't get an M1 Mac right away. Don't get an M1 Mac because Apple still does sell Intel Macs. Check it out. 2 gigahertz Core i5, 2 gigahertz Core i5 quad core, blah, 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 one terabyte of storage. Let's click on um, select to config this. We can max it out to an i7, 32 gigs of memory, four terabytes of storage. So it is what it is. We're just gonna have to be patient. I wish Apple would have said more about this, but then again, they're not gonna typically reveal their future plans because that might hurt current sales of these M1 Max. So there it is. Um, I'm looking at my notes here. I don't wanna miss anything. So. Will future Macs have upgradable RAM, like your own upgradable RAM, like my iMac 2020 does? In my opinion, absolutely. I can't imagine Apple limiting their more pro users uh, because, for instance, I have, what, 40 gigs of RAM in this iMac right now, and I use a lot more RAM than your typical user. Example, the other day, between Final Cut Pro 10 and Photoshop running at the same time, I was using, I think, 30 gigs of memory. 30 gigs of memory. That's a lot of RAM. I mean, in my eyes anyway. I mean, yeah, I realize there's people out there using like 64 gigs of RAM, which is insane. But 30 gigs of usage to me is a lot. So in other words, would I be okay on something like a Mac mini? Yeah, I could probably get by. But I'll say it again. It's way too early to tell. We don't know what RAM usage is like on an M1 Mac when compared to an Intel equipped Mac. So you just got to be optimistic. And as for the Mac Pro, I don't know what the Mac Pro is going to be like. I just don't. I mean, I mean, I, I, I think not a lot's going to change. I think we're still going to have access to the RAM, access to the GPU, and I don't know. But hear me out, and this is just me being a little, a little conspiracy theorist, th terrible way of saying it, for a minute here. Maybe Apple is limiting us to not being able to upgrade the RAM on the Mac Mini ourselves because maybe, just maybe, Apple is planning on releasing a mid-range Mac Tower. You know, something between the Mac Mini and the Mac Pro, but not nearly as expensive as the Mac Pro. Maybe something that costs like $2,000, $2,500, which I wouldn't mind paying. Okay, so I want something around that size and around that price, but I don't want to be forced to pay like five, six thousand dollars $6,000 for a Mac Pro because Someone like me, I want more power than a Mac Mini, but I know I'm never going to fully utilize the power of something the Mac Pro has to offer. Basically, I want something like the iMac, but without a display. How beautiful would that be? Like, I want a standalone mid-sized Mac tower without the display. But for now, I, I, I love this iMac. Okay, so before I let you guys go, I do have one more thing I want to clear up. L let me close this extra window that I can finally get some lunch because I'm very, very hungry. I've had nothing to eat and it's already 3 p.m. Let's go down to the Mac Mini. I had some confusion yesterday that I cleared up on Twitter. Shout out to my friend Jeff and everyone else who um, mentioned me on Twitter. I was talking about this. Why is Apple mentioning USB 4? Gotta be honest, as tech savvy as I am, I mean, my homepage is 9to5mac.com, so I'm usually in the know with the latest tech stuff, I didn't even know USB 4 was a thing already. I honestly didn't know. Call me an idiot. It's fine. Trust me. I felt like an idiot. 
Um, so I looked into some some videos last night. I educated myself in USB 4, and I was just overthinking the whole connector. USB C is simply the connector. I realize USB A is just a connector, but it doesn't necessarily mean USB A um, has to replace USB C, which again is just a connector because you're getting USB 4 speeds, which I think is 40 gigabits gigabits a second, right? Um, so yes, I realize USB A is just a connector uh, because you can technically get USB 3.0 and 3.2 speeds out of a USB A connector, uh, but you can also be using USB C, which sometimes is backwards compatible with, I think, Thunderbolt 3. I'm sure I said something wrong. Feel free to correct me in the comments, but I just want to make that clear. Like now I know USB 4 is a thing. I was just very surprised to see Apple actually call it USB 4 on the website because they've been recently pushing USB-C with the whole iPad thing and whatever. Um, so I, I was just surprised to see them actually say USB 4 and not USB-C. That's why I was confused, partly because of their use of the words, um, the term I should say, USB 4, uh, because I didn't even know USB 4 was a thing until yesterday. And apparently USB 4 has been in the works for like a year or two now. So you know what? Shame on me for not knowing, but I wanted to make that clear learn from my mistakes. Um, USB 4 apparently is a thing and it's pretty cool to see that Apple is embracing the um, technology kind of soon. I mean, for me, it feels soon because I feel like we just got into the whole USB-C connector, which I know, I know it's just a connector, but I don't know. Hey, I had a moment, you know? I had a moment, we all have those stupid moments. So I just wanted to throw that out there because watching my video back, I'm like, David, you look like an idiot. Anyway, guys, there you go. This video was all over the place, um, but too long, didn't watch. My whole take from this is this. We are still so, so early in the transition. I mean, guys, Apple just announced the first ever Apple Silicon Max. And as they've said, this is a two year transition. So I say this, trust them. They're typically pretty good with their claims and their events. Even though the whole graph thing yesterday that they showed comparing to the um, top selling notebooks or something like that from Windows, I mean that run Windows, yeah, that, that graph didn't really show anything technical. I, I, I wasn't sure how to read that. Um, and I've saw other YouTubers agree, like they're, they're not sure what Apple is trying to prove with that. But I'll say it again, let's just put our faith in Apple and let's put our trust in Apple and let's just hope they know what they're doing. I mean, they typically do. They're a multi-billion dollar company. If they're simplifying the whole Mac checkout process as if you're buying an iPhone, yeah, that could be okay with me. I guess I'm just gonna have to get used to it. And I guess you'll have to get used to it as well. Times are changing, that's for sure. And guys, honestly, I am all about change. I embrace change. So you know what? I say bring it. Bring on the change. I am ready and I'm excited. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you're staying safe and I'll talk to you later.